Hey guys, what's up? Scottish Tycoon once again. Right, time for another collection update. Okay, now, this collection update's been a long time in the makes because, well, it's a fairly big pile and I kept adding to it. I, uh, guys, I have seriously been, like, spoiling myself uh, over the past few weeks. I bought a lot of stuff here that I really didn't need to get, but I just went fuck it and now it's got to a point where I'm like, yeah, I really need to watch my pennies at this point. And this isn't even the whole thing, I still have one more game in the post, which I thought would come today but it hasn't, but I'm like, fuck it, I'll just do this anyway. I might, if I haven't uploaded it at this point, I might just stick it in at the end when I get it tomorrow, I'll just record the game in my hand and shit, but uh... Whatever, I'm gonna get all these out of the way now. So yeah, without further ado, let's continue. Okay. Uh, Kirby's Dreamland, the very first Kirby game, actually. I kind of went in a Kirby mood there, to be honest. You know, I was um, I was playing a, I was replaying through uh, bits of Return to Dreamland for the Wii, which is awesome. I love that game. And I was also playing Amazing Mirror on my 3DS, which was really good. But I kind of gave up on because. You know, it was kind of an open world Kirby game, and I wasn't. Uh, I don't know. It's actually a bad. That's actually a bad habit of mine. You know, with Metroidvania games lately. You know, when they get too big, I tend to be. Uh, I tend to, you know, not get immer as immersed in them. Ironically enough, but it's still a great game. You know, I'm not knocking it for anything. Not played this yet, but I'm sure it's great. So yeah. Uh, infinite space for a DS. Um, I've a lot of these are actually JRPGs, as you will see, because I've been on a real JRPG high ever since I beat Tales of the Abyss and Xenogears, and uh, I'm currently not playing through one. I've got to pick actually. Why don't you guys suggest one to me? But anyway, yeah, Infinite Space. Uh, this was the only Platinum Games game that I didn't have. You know, I've got Bayonetta, Mad World, and Vanquish, and now I have this. So I got the whole set. This is apparently a fairly good RPG, considered the worst. A game that Platinum Games has made, but with that said, it's still apparently quite good, so yay. Uh, yeah, that was MSN. Saw them, saw them. Alright, a few 3DS games. Right. Crush 3D, uh, the sequel to Crush for the PSP. Shut up, MSN. Um, it's, uh, it's really good, yeah. Uh, the first PSP game was like a real cult hit, though, you know, there was. Uh, not a lot of people bought it at all, so it's amazing that a sequel was made. And I feel bad for saying this, but I kinda, I'm on like the last couple of levels, and I'm not really that fussed at going back and beating it. I don't know, it's like, I, I guess I just got uh, into other games. This is undeniably a good game, don't get me wrong. It's not out in America yet, but it will be soon, so I do recommend you pick it up. It is a really unique uh, puzzle game, so yeah. I, w I will go back and beat it eventually. So, yeah. Crush the 3D. Resident Evil Revelations. I'm playing through this right now. In fact, my DS is in sleep mode right now with this game on a pause, you know. Uh, really, really enjoying this. This is a very traditional, you know, Resident Evil game. Uh, scary, sort of Labyrinth style. Everything that Resident Evil 5 was not, thank God. So, yeah, Capcom's definitely going in the right direction with uh, this game. Uh, it's very good. I'm enjoying it a lot. So, yeah. Good job, Capcom. You didn't fuck something up. Alright. Uh, Dr. Lutrec and the Forgotten Knights. I really wanted to like this game, guys, but I couldn't. Uh, my big problem with it is that it's, it's difficulty, right? It's it's actually not a Professor Layton ripoff, you know? you it, it was pretty much made to look like a Professor Layton ripoff, right? That much is incredibly fucking obvious, but it actually plays absolutely nothing like it. It's more of a turn-based RPG than anything. And level grinding in this game is an absolute chore. I mean, I could not grind worth for shit, because the only way to grind was to go back and do, like, uh, missions you've already done, and even then you only got a tiny amount of XP for it, and it took ages to actually get said XP, and it was just a mega tedious process, which is a shame, because I was enjoying it, and, yeah, but if you guys have got any tips on how to, you know, level up, you've got these things called, um, Treasure Animatus, they're kind of like your Pokemon, I guess, uh, if you guys know how to level those things up, uh, Please let me know, because, yeah, I'm, other than that, I'm kind of stuck there, so, hmm. Okay, and a few PSP, quite a few PSP games here, actually. Tales of Eternia, picked this up during my Tales of High. I haven't got around to playing, I haven't got around to playing any of these RPGs in this pile, by the way. Uh, but, yeah, this is actually called Tales of Destiny 2 in America for the PS1. The name Eternia wasn't allowed to be used over there for some reason. 
And you guys, you, and America didn't get this PSP version either, which is weird, but yeah. Apparently it's really good, and can't wait to give it a go. Okay. Alright. That's the name Miku, Project Diva 2nd. Yep, I imported the uh, second game now. Yeah, I already went over. Should, should I do a whole video devoted to Hatsune Miku? Should I, should I just, should I prove just how much of a weeaboo fanboy that I am? Hmm, I don't know. But in any case, this one, this is a game's a lot better than the first, you know, little different tweaks to the gameplay, and the songs are a lot better in my opinion. I don't think I want to get the third game, which is called Project Diva Extend, because that's literally just like the first game with seven or eight new songs, and... About a third of the songs in this are, you know, just recurring songs from the first game as well. Whereas, you know, two-thirds is like new songs which are a lot better. So I'm not pissed off by that or anything, but... The Hatsune Miku games in Japan really are just, you know, like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, you know. Kind of hoard out music games that they that they just, you know, chuck out annually, but... Heck. I love Hatsune Miku, alright, anyway. Heck. Might as well talk about both these games together. Okay, here we have Persona 2, Innocent Sin, and Trails in the Sky. Uh, these are both PSP games, you know. Uh, what really, you know, turned my eye to them was that they are Japanese RPGs for the PSP released in 2011. And not only did they get released in the UK, but they came with these in these really sweet collector's editions, which they both come with, like, a poster, a soundtrack, and a six collectible card things, and... Yeah, they're really nice, and they're brought out by the same publisher, Ghostlight, and, you know, obviously I, I just wanted to get them both. They just look like such cool things to have. Uh, Trails in the Sky is apparently uh, part of some series. Uh, there's three games out in Japan already, and the publisher did say they were planning to release all of them. Uh, the American publisher, that is. So uh, I'll definitely look out for those, because from what I've seen of it, it is really good. And Persona 2, I've got Persona 3 and 4. Really liked 4, not going around to playing 3, not going around to getting this, but this will be the next Persona game I play, so, yeah. But yeah, really nice collector's editions right there, and, yeah, they were just really nice to have. These these were a total impulse buy, like, so, yeah. And this camera's about to run out. Okay. Um, Atelier Tutori. Really liked the first one, Atelier Rorona, even though, fundamentally, there were a lot of things wrong with it, but... Overall, a good game. Apparently, this fixes a lot of the problems that uh, that game had. So, I'm looking forward to getting into this. And from what I've seen of it, it does look a million times better. You know, better graphics, better music, better combat system, all that jazz. So, yeah. Dark Souls, uh, limited edition. I uh, really like the first Demon Souls. Uh, well, Demon Souls. I never beat it. It uh, it wasn't necessarily because it was too hard, but because it was like there weren't enough hours in the day for me to play it. Because you had to put a lot of time into Demon's Souls to, you know, make fun, to get fun out of it. But I picked this up, mainly because it was cheap, but I was looking forward to it, because I do think Demon's Souls is one of the best games this generation, if I'm honest. So, yeah, looking forward to playing this one as well. Yeah, <laughs> running out of things to say, right. Now, <sighs> check this out. Both of these games didn't come out over here. Xenosaga Episode 1 and Xenosaga Episode 3. I've yet to get around to playing Episode 2. No, or getting it, rather. I haven't even tried any of them yet, but yeah. I played about five minutes of Xenosaga 3 at a friend's house, right? On his modded PS2, right? And I fucking fell in love with it. I, I am not joking. It looks so beautiful. I mean, I'm al I already like Xenogears and Xenoblades, so I really wanted to give the these ones a try. But the only one of the Xenosaga trilogy that was released in the UK was Xenosaga Episode 2, and that's considered the worst for... And the fact that they would put that one out and not the first or the third one is like, what the fuck? So, yeah. I just, it was another impulse buy, I just decided to get both of these, import them, I'm going to mod my PS2 to play them, I can't wait to try it, yeah, and I'll get around to getting the second one as well, they just look so good. Cool, yeah. And lastly we've got, uh, this battery's about to run out, but, uh, Gunblade NY and LA Machine Guns Arcade hits back. If this battery runs out, I can't be fucked finishing this off, but yeah. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that Sega is doing things like this, you know, uh, repackaging arcade hits, you know, non-Mega Drive compilations, essentially, you know, so people that didn't play these games, 
in the past can now get to experience them. But I actually beat both games in less than an hour. Because, you know, they've got unlimited continues and that. Which I appreciate. Uh, for what they were, they were really fun games. I only paid three quid for this. But if you paid any more than ten pounds, then you kind of got ripped off. No matter how much you enjoyed the original arcade games. So, yeah... But yeah, I, I would like it if Sega did more things like this. Just packaging or their arcade games, you know, maybe even putting on PSN or something for just to play. So yeah, I enjoyed it. So mm. Okay, and that's that for this collection update. Uh, yeah, a lot of games, wasn't it? See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.